Welcome back to the Links of Time Super 100% walkthrough, all S ranks and cat medals. We're gonna start with Hourglass Clays, where things get a little bit easier, and of course, it's just a good deal longer, too. The only part here that really takes effort for getting an S rank is the boss, which in fact takes a surprising amount of effort, but we'll get that when we get to it. It seems to be a lot more monsters to be done with now, but there's nothing we actually need to be concerned about. If you've got a particularly fast sweeper, you might want to be a little bit more careful than I was there, since you might not be all the way out of the way in time, but knowing your limits is something I'll have to be doing anyhow. So I like to just get rid of these power blobs quickly on their own, and then pick up this little level 2 trash for the mulling on. Once that's out of the way, we don't need to bother with going through the doors or anything like that, we just run through this shortcut, since we have level 3 sweeper, or we hopefully have one, and use a record to run on back and deal with these two chrono blobs. This is also trash you can use very conveniently to get rid of one, and then you can use a system to wait, you just picked up to get rid of the second one. Very time efficient, and I do very much love it. I like to use time controls here in this level, but you don't really have to, I don't think, to complete it efficiently. I also like to use the 60 ton one to get rid of the chrono blob in time efficiency, just using the right trash on the right enemies. And then, we have another level to trash thing right here for us to use on the dropper. And fun fact, actually, this little shortcut I figured out here, getting up to the top of that bridge from the furnace, is something that I improvised while recording this. Didn't have it planned up beforehand, but I saw it and decided I should take that for the And that gives us a clear time way beyond what the game is actually asking of us to get an S. So you definitely don't use a record like they did there, I don't think, but it's nice to do. Nothing wrong with overkill, I don't think. That done. Being out all the cat moles here is thankfully not much of an issue. I already saw one. Right inside that drug system kind of weight, you can see the bronze cat metal. Not too far off, right at the end, you can jump into the sand waterfall, and from there, you can see the silver metal underneath as you float around the sand. Do be careful that that blue octopus does not hit you, however. And then, the most difficult one to get, fittingly enough, is the gold, where you have to either use a pause if you have some very lucky timing to get up to the top of this sand waterfall via the logs, or you can try to stand the logs and use a rewind. Both I find rather difficult. Just use whatever works for you. On to stage two. That was for the brief. Stage two is a lot more lenient with its time. Or rather, has a much longer time limit, but I actually found myself kind of struggling a little bit more to get away from that time limit. Getting it out by more than a minute. Mostly because you have a bunch of level 2 enemies now. Maybe we have lots of level 2 trash to help with that, but it's not always going to work out so conveniently. We do have some blue octobloons here you can get rid of. But once we have that out of the way, we can actually jump towards one of the enemies up there as well and get rid of them, get rid of them in advance, as you've seen I like to do in other levels such as in Deja Vu Canals. It just saves some time, I feel. You don't need to worry about as many things shooting stuff at you when you get there later. Speaking of which, I like to get rid of this Octoloon over here on, on these platforms on more stable ground than a bunch of trampolines. Once we're up here, though, we have these two yellow chrono blobs to deal with. Unfortunately, no level 2 trash to do it with. Well, only one bit. And sorry for that little notification, too. Crap. Wish that didn't make it into the recording. Didn't think it did first. But once you have all those dealt with through simply waiting for them to recover and then even the second time, you have more enemies to run around and hit. Things get pretty simple. It turns out for better or worse. You will notice there's a 16 ton of weight you can get rid of, however off to one side. Do be careful if you get rid of this though, because, yep, yeah, wait a little bit, because that duster likes to try to hate you as you open it up, because you can see you through the weight, darn cheater. Anyways, let's all to trash pick up here, along with this season ton weight, which means it's wonderful being rid of everything quickly, get rid of any <laughs> mulligans that decide to show their faces for some reason or another. Back to Tanya, I guess. And then when it comes to the Karopper, Croppers cannot actually eat 
to my knowledge, 16 ton weight, so you can just bat him in the face with it if they haven't noticed you. In that case, I just got him in the back anyhow. No problem. So this is where things start to get a little bit more run of the mill. As you saw, I was kind of at a loss for fun, entertaining things to say about the strategies I was taking. I had no time trolls to use here either, because things just kind of get to where all you need to get in S rank is just running through a level without wasting much time. And that gets pretty easy to do. You also probably noticed all, f not all three, but a number of cat medals as I was running through them. First bronze cat medals just behind some trash. So, the medal is also behind some trash. Look at that. As for the third cat medal, in this very same area, all you have to do is turn around and go back a little bit, and here we can see yet another 16 ton weight, in fact. Now, normally you won't get so lucky as to have Octa Balloon shoot off a little pinch for you to stand on. So you can set this one little corner here, just barely, and then suck up the weight, and use it as you see fit. Not being getting a record in this case, actually, along with the free retry. It's rather nice. Very nice for trying to get S ranks rather conveniently enough. And then we have the cat medal. Enjoy your gold and all the other such things. Now, on to round, th not round, stage three, but quite coincidentally, round three as well. This is where I have some fun, bouncy things. And it turns out, actually, a little more interesting things about this stage is that all of the Cat metals are in very, very close proximity to each other. There's also lots of sand stuff to suck up, but some of us have bombs and other such things. Nothing interesting, so I never suck it up for anything. Never need to do it for cat metals or anything like that, so... Never any reason to get the alliance, so you can, like, just want to be fast. And that's what I have the TSX-7 for. So aside from just trying to alternate between hitting different enemies, so I can get rid of them as quick as possible, despite the fact that they take multiple hits, it's just the usual trash management, trying to pick up enough to make sure I'm able to get through the rest of the stage. On some platforms, and hopefully along with that, just managing enemies, like usual. Thankfully, there's only one Octoboon here that takes more than one hit. These Octoboons are surprisingly easy to get rid of, too. But, uh, I'm not quite sure if you can actually suck out that 60-ton weight from the side. I never bothered with it. I actually just run on through here since we have some nice trash to suck up from here anyways. I feel like it's a little too trash for that matter. Oh, the 60-ton weight is also rather convenient for some certain other matters. These guys are not like leaving you alone though. Oh, the trash is of course perfect for being with enemies such as a level 2 dust turtle. No, actually, well, I can't quite make up my mind out if I should get the 16 ton weight or not. But I decide it's rather useful for either Karopper or the Chrono Mob that we're going to run into. I believe we're going to run into the Chrono Mob first, however. But there's also an alternative use for it. Ah, now this is an actual time efficient thing to do, but I decided it would be fun to wait and do that. Into the button. There's nothing special here. I don't really know of any way to save time here either, other than just not wasting time trying to do things like hit Tom Tom. Just use the recorder and run on through here. Do I store what you can do? I do notice how it's saying on bunch for longer means the door stays open longer, so make of that what you will. Now there does have to be a little to trash right here, and you can't actually just run really tight circles around this proper to hit it in the back, so I don't see any need for taking it a little too trash from early in the stage or anything like that. It all works out pretty well conveniently enough. And we crushed the S rank time with that as well, without using any time controls to save time. Just one record that we had to use to get through the level. Definitely getting very easier. And it's only gonna get easier from here on out, which is nice. Anyhow, for, as we're getting all the cat medals, first off we have jumping down at the end of this little corridor of ramps with sand sliding down. Then we have the bronze metal off in the corner if you decide to wade through the sand far enough along. Then if you keep on bouncing on all the jumper wings up above, you get the silver cap metal. And as for the third cap metal, just turn left from the air and you can see a nice little indentation in the wall. That hides some very nice things indeed. Some trash for you for some reason. Love that. To retrize. Some very nice. 
medals for fast forward, which is quite convenient for trying to get some of course, though we don't really need them anymore. And lastly, of course, the gold cap medal. Beautiful. Now for some reason, you actually need to do some real serious stuff to get rid of Morler and Time Gun S rank. Namely, both using a fast forward and a spike ball. So I switch decided to not switch to fast forward immediately, but I like to hit the boss with the spike ball immediately, and then from there use a fast forward, and for some reason I have a really, really, really hard time hitting this thing when in fast forward, so what I let do is I let eat the platform I'm on, and I hit it while I'm still in the instability frames. That is quick enough for me to get a nice frame. But only with a few seconds to spare, too, only about 8 seconds, so... Actually, exactly 8 seconds for that matter, but... Odd how that worked out. I'm not quite sure why that is, because most bosses aren't like that at all. But, that will be it for this portion of the 100% walkthrough of Blinks the Time Sweeper. So guys, next time in the next area, which would be Forgotten City.